In this bass lesson, you're going to learn exactly what to do if you want to improvise on bass, but you're not sure where to get started. In fact, you'll get an entire system to go from being a clueless bass improviser to taking a great, simple bass solo that you can be proud of creating. Hey, I'm Luke McIntosh from BecomeABassist.com, and in the next few minutes, you'll learn the secret to making your bass solos great, even if you've never taken a bass solo before. Improvising can be scary, right? Most of the time, you stand at the back of the stage, locking it down with the drummer. You're usually not in the spotlight. Every once in a while, though, you might get the nod from someone. They want you to take a bass solo. And what happens? Your heart rate skyrockets, your palms start getting sweaty. Where you were once calm and relaxed before, now you're just a ball of tension. And what comes out? Nothing good, right? Maybe you just play the same old bass line you've been playing the whole song. Maybe you play that one lick you know over and over until you put everyone to sleep. Maybe you try and play, try and play some scale that you know should work, but just ends up sounding horrible. Or worse yet, you may completely freeze and play nothing. If any of those sound like you, you are going to love this video. You see, improvising on bass, taking bass solos, it doesn't have to be nerve-wracking and stressful. It's actually supposed to be fun. And I want to show you the secret to playing something that you know is going to work. But more importantly, I want to show you how you can take a bass solo that you can be proud of. Something you can listen to afterwards, and instead of cringing and hating the sound of it, you can listen to your playing and smile and be satisfied that you created something special. To do this though, we need a song to improvise over, right? For us, let's use uh, the Stevie Wonder song, Isn't She Lovely. Honestly, you could use pretty much any song for this, but uh, this will work well for us. Now, have a look at the chord progression of this song up here. There's a lot of chords in there, right? Now, conventional wisdom would say that in order to improvise, you need to know every scale, every arpeggio that goes with every chord. So what does that look like in this example up here? Well, if we analyze this song with its chord scale and arpeggio relationships, we'd end up with this. Whoa! <laughs> Lots of things to learn there, right? Dorian's, Lydian's, some weird diminished scale, that G sharp 7 flat 9 chord. But hold up, we're not going to use any of this at all. Scales and arpeggios can be a great way of building bass solos, and they're super useful, but when you're just starting out, a lot of the time, they get in the way of the music. So in this lesson, we won't be using them. By the way, I'm not suggesting you never use scales or arpeggios. Once you get the hang of them, they can be amazing for finding new sounds, creating more complex and interesting solos, not to mention they'll really open up the fretboard for you. But if you're watching this video, chances are that you're not quite ready for that yet. Even if you do uh, know how all this stuff works, we're going to put it aside just for now. We can always come back to it later. So, what do you do instead? If we're not going to use scales or arpeggios, what's left? Do we just use the root of the chords? That'd get pretty boring pretty fast, right? <laughs> so, what's the secret? How do you go from being completely lost in a bass solo to knowing exactly what to play without using scales and arpeggios? The secret is to play the melody. Oh my god, it baffles me that more people don't do this. The melody is the song. But most people, when they get to a solo, they pr try and play everything except the melody. But think about it. You already know the melody works with the chords. You'll never get lost playing the melody. And best of all, your audience is going to love it too. The melody is like a hook for your audience. They hear it, they recognize it, they're immediately drawn in because they can relate to that melody. They're going to appreciate the melody a whole lot more than a bunch of random scales that don't go anywhere and don't make sense. Even Stevie Wonder knew this. When it gets to the harmonica solo in the song, what does he play? The melody. Listen to the recording. It's all right there. So how do you get started with this idea? Well, you simply learn the melody to whatever song you have to improvise over. With Isn't She Lovely, uh, that'd look uh, something like this. I've got a quick little practice track here. So just imagine you've been given the nod for a bass solo. You might do something like this. Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah? How simple is this? There's absolutely nothing in there that wasn't already in the song. The melody, it's already part of the song. Even that lick at the end there, this uh... That's in the song too. If you are truly stuck and really just don't know what to do when it comes to your bass solo, and you don't just want to play the same old bass line that you've been playing the whole song, play the melody exactly how it is on the recording. You're guaranteed to always sound good and you'll never play a bad note. Now I know what you're saying right about now. You're saying, Luke, that's not improvising, that's just playing the damn melody. How can I start making up my own bass solos? First of all, calm your farm just a little bit. <laughs> Now you could definitely make the argument that this method doesn't leave you improvising because you're just copying the recording. So if you want to level up your solos, here's what to do next. We're going to take that same melody we've just played, the same notes in the same order, and we're going to play with where you place them in the phrase. You're playing with the phrasing of the melody here. The same melodic line, but just played slightly differently. How do you do this? Uh, the first thing to try is to take the melody, but instead of playing it perfectly in time like we did before, we're going to play every phrase just a little bit later. Yeah, instead of playing the melody exactly where it should be, be we'll delay it by just a tiny bit. You're pulling the melody back, and that'd sound something like this. <laughs> <laughs> yep, of course, at the end there, you have to play uh, that kind of that lick in time, or else it's going to sound pretty bad. Again, though. It's the same melody, but now you're putting your own spin on it. You're deciding how long to delay that melody. You're improvising with the phrasing, even though you're using the same melody. Pretty sweet, right? You can do the exact same thing, but instead of delaying the melody and laying back, you can anticipate the melody, push it forward. You'll end up playing the whole melody a little bit earlier than it is normally. That might sound like this. Pushing forward. Just like that. Now personally, for me, I find this a little bit trickier than delaying the melody. You might be the same way, or this pushing the melody forward might make more sense to you. So now we have three different ways of taking a bass solo just using the melody. How great is that? You've got the melody exactly like the recording, then the same melody pulling back on the melody, and then pushing forward. You can make your whole solo using one of these ideas, or you can mix them all together so there's a bit more variety. Right now though, I want to give you even more options that are a bit more advanced, but still melody based. Next we're going to take the rhythm of the melody, but play the notes in a different order, yeah? So the notes we've been using in the melody are G sharp, A, G sharp again, F sharp and E, and then C and B. And we also use this high B up here when we get to the second part. So those are the notes we're going to use, but rather than play them exactly as they happen in the melody, we're going to make up our own order for the notes. It's almost like we're rewriting or remixing the melody. The exact same ingredients, but just treated slightly differently. It's like taking the same eggs and making an omelette versus making eggs sunny side up. Same stuff, just put together differently. Still super delicious, <laughs> just slightly different. So what would this sound like? The rhythm of the melody, but with the notes in a different order. Remember, the original rhythm of the melody was da 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 ba 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 Yeah? So if we take that rhythm and mix up the note order, you might get something like this. <laughs> Mm 
Notice the rhythm of the melody was still there and we still used the same notes. The only thing that changed was the order the notes were played in. Now when you get to this level, it does get a bit trickier. Some of the notes will clash with the chords. You even saw it, or rather heard it, in, uh, in what I just played before. There was one note, I think it was an A, that really should have been a different note. Yeah? You have a few options when, it, when uh, this happens. First. You could uh, analyze the chords, figure out the avoid tones, which notes will clash in theory, and then uh, be sure to stay away from them. If this appeals to you and you've got a, a very kind of analytical mind and you have the knowledge to do it, go for it. However, if you don't know how to do that just yet, then you can use a much more intuitive method of trial and error. For example, you might play uh, something like this. <laughs> Oh, right there, okay. So that note right there, that A did not work over that particular chord, yeah? That A just doesn't sound that great. It's, a, it's clashing with the chord, so it really should either be a G sharp or a B, yeah? But not an A. So what you do, you make a mental note of that. Over that part of the song, a G sharp or a B will sound much better than the A. And after some trial and error, you'll have a kind of mental map of the song. What's going to sound best where, the pitfalls of the song, uh, where you know not to play certain notes. A good way to find these clashy notes is to record yourself. Just on your phone is fine, but record yourself playing over a track kind of like this one. Listen back and find where the notes just don't work. Usually when you find a note like this, the notes either side of it will usually work pretty well. Not all the time, but it's a great uh, kind of starting place for you. Notice how at every level we've moved further and further away from the melody. First we moved away, away rhythmically by pushing and pulling on the melody. Then we kept the rhythm but changed the order of the notes. Now let's combine those two ideas, change the order of the notes as well as pushing or pulling on the rhythm of the melody. Now we're really starting to truly improvise, create new melodies rather than recite the existing one. So let's try this. We might end up with something that sounds like this. sound like the original melody, right? But it still has its roots in that melody. That solo was born of that original melody. And that matters. Remember how I said the melody can hook your audience, make them pay attention to what you're doing? There's still enough of that melody in there that people listening to you will recognize the melody, even if it's just subconsciously. This stuff works, I can tell you from experience. When I was much younger, <laughs> I remember I was playing a jazz set at a wedding gig. It was just dinner music. Nobody was really paying attention to anything the band was doing. Nobody, nobody was clapping or even reacting to the band. But holy damn, I was trying so hard to get a reaction from anyone in that room. Uh, when it came to the bass solos, I was pulling out all the fancy licks I knew, trying to play as fast as I could, doing anything I could think of to pull their attention away from their fancy fish or whatever they were eating. Nothing worked at all. So I tried a different approach. I did exactly what we talked about in this lesson. I played the melody and played around the melody. Super simple, no fancy scales, no double time licks, no wanky BS. <laughs> and you know what happened? I remember it like it was yesterday. After I finished this super simple melody based solo, I hear exactly one person clapping. 
and nobody had been clapping for anything so far. I still remember him too. It was an older guy, graying hair, big glasses, and a patterned shirt. He had this big grin on his face looking at me, and I, in my mind I was like, yes, I got him. <laughs> sure, it was, it was just one guy, but if I can make just one person happy with my playing, that's a win in my book, because I'd made him happy, so I was happy as well. It was a huge confidence booster at the same time, and it was all because I took a melodic approach to my bass solos. Once you get to the point where your melody bass solos are going well, and you want to take things further, you can start looking into the more scalar approaches to soloing, using different scales and different modes to create more complex, more interesting melodies, yeah? When you combine knowledge of all uh, your scales with this melodic approach, you'll be unstoppable because you'll have all the sounds you'd ever want, but they'll make sense because you've developed your solos in a super melodic way. If you want to start getting into these different scales and sounds, I've put together a killer guide for you all about the different scales and modes that you can use uh, in your bass solos. All the scales can be intimidating, but everything in this guide I've made sure to be super clear, super simple, without any of the confusing jargon that just muddies the waters when you're learning. It also comes with 24 practice tracks you can use today to start your journey towards mastery over the modes, and after you've gone through it, you'll know exactly what you can play in nearly any situation. You'll never have to struggle with the modes again. To get started, just click the link below, sign up on that page, and I'll send it straight to your inbox. You are going to love it. To recap really quickly though, you learn the steps to follow to getting started with improvising on bass if you don't know where to start. You learn that the simplest, most effective way of starting to improvise was simply taking the melody. Then we started playing with the phrasing, pulling back, pushing forward on the melody. Then we took the original rhythm of that melody, changed the order of the notes. And finally, we combined those ideas to start truly improvising, creating new melodies that are still grounded in the original melody. I hope this has been super helpful to you. If it has, definitely be sure to sign up for that guide to the modes on the website, give this video a like, and a subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Luke McIntosh, creator of becomeabassist.com, and I'll see you super soon.